So, E, man, let me ask you. So, you, you watched our defense, man. Give, give me an assessment of how you feel, you know, the defense has played, brother. You know what I'm saying? From your perspective. We've been looking for this defensive perspective for a while. What do you think about this young defense, bro? You know what? I'm, I'm happy about where they're at right now because they're a lot better than last year. Um, a lot of inconsistency. But, you know, um, for the most part, Chris Jones has done a pretty good job this year. Frank has stepped it up big time, even though, know, you know, he got the four game suspension, but he stepped it up big time. It's good to have Willie Gay and, uh, oh my God, I'm Bolton. Frank Park, a guy from Missouri, 32. Bolton. Yeah, Bolton. Bolton. Uh, yes. Yeah. I love the way they're playing. Um, now, the one guy that hasn't shown me his potential, and I can't say his last name, but he's a first round pick. Carl Loftus? Yeah. Yeah. Other than that, I think the guys are playing well. I don't like the situations that our secondaries put in. It seems like we get a lot of one-on-one -on -one and it's getting exposed. For the most part, I don't care who, what corner you are. Every corner's gotten beat this year. It's going to happen. Happen right. to everybody. Yeah. Um, but we got to find ways to help them more. Um I don't know if we run cover two more like a cover two blitz, but yet that's that seems to be the, the thing that's hurting us the worst is, is the exposure of the corners and uh, a lot of deep balls. Um, and so other than that, I love what we're doing, man. It's, 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 it's different than, than what we did last year. Uh, was I happy with bringing Frank back? Not really, because it's, I thought we paid him a lot of money for the production that he wasn't doing, but. He's really done a good job this year. So, and I hate to say a guy he's you know needs doesn't want uh, shouldn't be on the team because of production. But um, you know, like if if I can't produce what you signed me for, and what's used to me, you know, being on the squad, you know, I understand how the system works. And so he's coming along and done a great job. Um, but hey. The thing that gets me the most is like watching the offense and like you know how exciting they are, how good they are, and it's like we'll get a drive. I'm like, what the heck are we doing? Like, why do why would we even try that? Um, yeah. So, I, to be honest, I think our offense is score every time we touch the ball, every single time. Um, mm -hmm. but we find ways to blow to blow drives, and so. Uh, defenses are going to struggle. I don't care who you are. You know, they had Dallas Cowboys as one of the top-ranked defenses for the first, I don't know how many seasons of the games of the season. And all of a yeah. sudden, like, you know, all their defense can do right now is sack the quarterback, and they're giving up all these other big plays. But yet, how much pressure do you want as a, as a front seven than, you, than what Dallas is giving them? Than what Dallas is giving right. Uh, right. You can't find a better pressure uh, front seven. But yet, like I said, people don't understand. Like in today's, like you rarely get that nine route tree, you know, which is going to be basic routes. There's a lot of cross uh, picking. There's a lot of double moves, and when you get that kind of stuff, it's going to beat your corners no matter what. I don't care who you are, Deion Sanders to Jarrell Rivas, uh, they're going to get beat. And so. I hate the the one on one stuff to where our guys are out on an island at that point uh, because we don't have that shut down guy. But I don't know what team in the league has a shut down corner right now. Um, yeah, you got guys that are making plays on the ball and making some you know some interceptions, but there's no shut down corners in the NFL anymore. Do you think the uh, kind of leaving the guys out on the island, especially young guys like Jalen Watson, seventh round pick, Josh Williams, I think fourth or fifth round pick, do you think it helps these guys mature faster, kind of leaving them on islands as such as start to right out the gate? That that's kind of keeps we run with these young guys. Oh, it definitely helps. I mean, when you see the how you get exposed and uh, at what point that you lost the the route and the and the ball, you get to understand and see that and experience it. Um, Boy, that doesn't make it any easier when you have to go out there the next week and you got somebody that's smaller in statue that's uh, going to run a different route or somebody that's bigger that's just going to outrun you. Uh, <laughs> playing corner is not easy. That You have to react to that guy's every step. 
Um, and nine times out of ten, the receivers are always faster than the corners, always. And so it's it's not an easy job. Yeah, and, and what? So I, I know you said overall you, you like the way the defense has played. Um, but how how would you grade the secondary? Because JD and I like pre draft, we we're like, oh, we need to go go out and just get all edge rushers. We end up kind of going more so the secondary aspect and with McDuffie, Williams, uh, Watson, um, and then Brian Cook to safety. Um, how would you have graded these rookies so far? Kind of being thrown and thrusted in and kind of thrown right in without any kind of other veteran cornerback on the team. Marcus, we figured out ways to win games. Uh, and that's all we need. You know, I, again, I don't know of a, a defense that's just um, the Seattle of the league when they had Sherman and uh, Cam Chancellor and those guys. I, I don't know of a defense that's that, that's that good at this point right now. Uh, so what you do is you give your guys a, a chance to make the play or make the tackle. And as of now, like, um, I think the thing that a lot of corners are having to do now is, like, you're not going to make the play, so just make the tackle. So instead of having to try to knock that ball down, just go ahead and make the tackle. Or if you can, commit the P.I. instead of giving up the touchdown. Um, it, it's not an easy task. I, I We do have a young secondary. They're, they're learning at battle. And I, I, to me, right now at this point, I like I like what they've accomplished so far. So let me let me let me let me say this, okay? Because I, it, what Marcus asked you is what I've been talking about for the past few weeks uh, with uh, with Williams, and I was saying that you know it's it's necessary that you put a guy like that out there to see what he can do, especially with the defense that Spags plays all the time yeah. with his corners, and so. Um, I think <clears throat> for for me, and when I'm watching his technique, when you know it's like third and long or whatever like that, it's like it, you, you don't get beat deep. If you know you don't have help over top, the one place you can't get beat is what? You can't get beat deep, right? Yep. I think last week he did a good job as far as walling um, um, Kenny and Allen off. Kenny and Allen. And Kenny and Allen just came in and just made that play on his side. You know yes. what I mean? What do you do about that, right? I mean, come on. Guy just makes a play. It's the same thing like the dude try to with, – with Justin Jefferson, he goes over and make it with, call, with one hand. He, yeah, you can knock it down, but guys are going to make plays. I mean, you know, guys get paid. I mean, that's how it works in the NFL. And so I, I think, you know, everybody's talking about, you know, when it's third and long, yeah, should he get help over top? Absolutely. Spags trusts, you know, Williams and those guys out there. He, he, he trusts them to do the right thing in their technique. Uh, when they play Buffalo – and we we're kind of talking about this. I was like, you know, Williams, he's going to get better over time. And sometimes you got to throw a guy out there in the fire to see what he can do. And and look, we we've seen the best receivers in the game. I mean, yeah. if you think about it, we have seen the best receivers that the NFL has to offer, pretty much. Supposed to what? Um, you know, Justin Jefferson and everybody. Everybody else, we 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 don't seen that. I mean, we and had, we had to go against pretty, Tyreek every week. It, it, exactly. So. The thing is, the guy's going to do a, a, a good job. And I, and I like that because you challenge guys early so they can be better off, uh, further off in the playoffs, right? Because you kind of know what you can do. And I, I told this to, to a lot of people on Twitter is Spags, he sees the guys out there to practice, right? He's not going to put him in a situation he don't think he can't do, right? We, we know this as a coach. I'm not going to ask you to do something I know you can't do. I'm not going to sure. do that. And I think people just, they think, oh, well, you shouldn't. Well, Spags trusts him. If he's watching to go against these guys in practice, he trusts this guy to come one-on-one -on -one with, you know, of course, against Davis and against Diggs. But those guys, are, you're talking about monster guys, right? I mean, you're talking about uh, Devontae Adams, Diggs, Davis, Keenan Allen, Mike Williams. I mean, we, we go down the list of guys they didn't see. And so – But, J.D., I, the easiest yeah. place to coach from is where? Well, yeah, of course. We from know sideline in, 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 the, in the box. <laughs> right, right. Well, yeah, well, sure, sure. So I, I can sit from my couch and tell you everything that a coach should do, what the player did. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's easy to, to coach from, from the couch, man. But, it's true. you know, when, yeah. you, when, you, when you sit here and go through, you know, Wednesday, Thursday, Fridays, practice with these guys, you understand what they 
bring to your defense. Yes. You're not going to run a play just say, oh, I'm going to put you on the island just to get you beat. Right. Come on. No. Or, or, or we're going to just stay with the scheme. Well, well, I'm just going to call this because we got to just stay with the scheme. No, nah, we ain't going to do that. Now, nah. so if, I, hey. if I call that defense and my corner gets an interception, then you're going to be like, great play. You know? Ex but that's yes. all because of what exactly. the corner did. You know? Right. And so it's like right. – People got to understand, man, like this is not an easy game. Every person on that field, all 22 of those guys in between those lines is getting paid. Yes. You know, somebody's yes. got to get beat. And look, and look, and, and these guys, is, they're starting, like these are the best guys in the business doing it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, we like upper echelon, I think sometimes, in the, uh, you know, the scope of how people look at it, I don't think they quite fully understand that part of it, right? Uh but man, look, I, I I think man, your your assessment on the defense, man, is spot on. Like you said, Frank has been playing uh, exceptionally well. The uh, linebacker has been playing tremendously well. I like. I I think George needs to come up and step up, man. He he hadn't really sniffed anything. He got what maybe a half a sack this year. How many sacks did he have? I don't even know what his numbers are to be honest with you. Uh, I do know he's like he had one, it, one and a half. He's, he's leading all the rookies in um in pressures of all the, of all the rookies. Yeah, pressures. I know. Pretty yeah, pressures. Yeah, yeah, but you know, pressures are good. You know that that sack because he's he's just right there. He's always just like <laughs> right there, man. He's always right there. You know, so half sack. Well, you know, yeah, half sack. Yeah, that's what I thought. That's what I thought. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this is one thing that uh, a lot of people online have been saying, and I, I've been waiting to talk to a, a secondary expert and, and E. Um, everyone's been kind of shitting on Justin Reed, saying he's been kind of a kind of a bust of a of a, of a pickup this offseason. There was a lot of hype on him replacing Matthew, and we really haven't seen much of him. What have you seen from Justin Reed? Justin is not the honey badger, so don't expect somebody to come in and do what he did. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I think he's doing an exceptional job. He's doing a great job. I don't. I don't sit and monitor his every play. So, uh, to to say what he's given up as opposed to what um, he's accomplished for the team, I don't, I don't know the the difference in what he's done so far as whether it's good or bad. But from what I've seen so far, I think he's done well, uh, well-rounded athlete. I wish we had to use him more early in the season to kick some of those field goals next point. <laughs> but. Um, <laughs> Outside of that, uh, yeah, he's not the honey badger. You know, he, he doesn't – he's not instinctively um, talented like that. You know, he's going to make plays. Uh, I, I think we were all hoping that he'd have a couple more interceptions than, than what he has. Um, but, yeah, there's, there's not a lot of people that are built like the Tyron Matthews. So, let's not expect somebody to just come in and replace him or, you know, for some of the other talented players that we have lost. You know, you know we, we lost – Tariq Hill, nobody expected Juju to come in and, you know, make plays like Tariq or Sky Moore or any, any of the other guys. So uh, you just got to bear with what you have. And um, right now we're pulling our W's, and that's all that matters. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, this man such a great point. No, go on, J.D. No, I would say that that's such a great point of, like, the expectations, right, of just saying, like, it, you know, he's, he's not Honey Badger. Right. So get that out of your head. I understand he came in to replace him, but you need to realize who the honey badger was, right? All pro, you know what I'm saying? The 2000, make like all decade team, I think. I mean, this, you know, he was a monster back there, safety. And so maybe what I see from, from Justin Reed, I, I think he's doing, like you said, I think he's doing a, a good job uh, playing the position he's playing. Uh, I, I think maybe I expected. A little bit better tackling. I think sometimes I see some some missed tackles. I'm just like, oh, you know, that, you know, I think he, he should get. But maybe I'm just being picky if I see something, right? That's just me being like, oh, man, how did he miss that one, right? That's 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 what that is. Yeah. Uh, I think overall, though, man, he's, he's, a, he's a solid safety, no doubt about it. I think, matter of fact, also, too, just with his leadership, he makes the whole secondary better in itself, right? That's, an, that's another thing. So, He's he's got he's got all the all the tangibles everything like that that you need in a solid safety no doubt about it so yeah and one thing too you know coming into the season we were talking about edge rush being a huge priority we needed to address you know we didn't think we addressed it enough then we got Dunlap um and and what was it we're going into week twelve right now 
and we already have more sacks this year than we did all of last year. 32 right now. We had 31 all of last year. So that pass rush says, I mean, it's looking like a million bucks compared to what it was last year. It is. You know, a, a thing last year, we complained and, and, and we said that Spags need to quit with the experiment with, with Chris. I mean, it's, it's working in year two. You know, he's, he's got him on the left. He's got him on the right. He's got him up the middle. Mm-hmm. And uh, Chris has been exposing offensive lines and, and getting to the quarterbacks or, or adding pressure. So um, it, 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 sports is built on patience, man. And, and when you're invested so so much emotionally, it's hard to understand that because you want it every play. You want it instant. And when you don't get that, when you see something that, you know, you experiment with, and it turns out that it looks like it backfires, then you really get upset. So it's like, why we keep doing this? But um, Chris is a phenomenal, he's a special type of player, you know. And with this talent, you know, you don't think a guy that big can move as fast, but uh, to put him on a red, uh, put him on the edge and come off as a rusher, but heck, man, he's, he's taking advantage of it. He's made it work for us. Yeah, it's a good switch up. It's a good switch up. But I think maybe the, the difference was because they started him out there defensive end. But now when you're switching him up, it's a good change of pace. Big tackle, he had no idea that you know yeah. big joke was coming out there. He don't know what to do, you know. So that's good. That's that's good game planning by Spags to do that, to pick and choose when to put him out there defensive end. Yeah. It's being creative with, with a guy like that. When with a guy like that, you should be creative and try to, you know, mix and match and do different things with him. And it, so and it helps the other guys because you know, the, the the offensive line or the tight ends don't get familiar with their blocking styles. Or not their blocking, right. but their rushing style. So, Yeah. Yeah, that's huge. That's huge. Trying to block something like that. Yeah. So I know if I had, if I had that sucker out there trying to block him, I, I had to hold on for dear life. You know what I mean? But you know I what, Jake? If you had to block Chris Jones and he lined up at the left tight, at the left rush end and you're, and you're playing that right, you would yeah. figure out a way to pick him up, like how to block him. Now, oh yeah, no, no, no doubt. Yeah, but if he keeps switching and you don't understand like what he's doing on one play after another, it's gonna be hard for you to to, to block that. Right, right. Because I I had to make that adjustment. All of a sudden, exactly. my feet, my hands. Yes, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying, man. It's tough, especially a guy like a, that caliber. You know what I mean? Now look, I hey, I and E, look, I've done uh, tre- tremendously well. I want to say I pat myself on the back. I had, I had some of the, the best, the best in the business yeah. to do it. Yeah, you had some dogs. <laughs> Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Shoot. Hi, everybody. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out the best clips from Chief Concerns. And if you prefer to listen to the show, subscribe and follow us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and anywhere else you get podcasts.